All right, welcome to the Friday Night Spotlight, Northeast Kayak Fishing TV. Tonight we got some of the uh, originals in the house tonight. From the Granite State Kayak Anglers, we got Mr. Ed Ashton, he was the Angler of the Year, and Sean Roach, who is the director of the club. Uh, so we got a bunch of questions for them. Uh, so we'll bring them right in and get right into it. How you guys doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Fantastic. Uh, first, I got I to gotta say, everything I look into, it seems like you guys were probably the first club in New England. Am I right? We were the, or... we were the first club in New Hampshire. Um, Ken, I think, got his started the same, the same year, but I think he got started a little bit before me. Really? I think he started a month or so before me. Really? I, guys, so Ken, Ken, no, I think Ken got his started just before mine. Wow. I thought you guys had been around uh, before that. Um, I was part of a um, club that it was a small boat club for a little while. Um, I okay. co-ran co that. Yeah, maybe that's uh, what I was saying. Well, that or I've been running the long – I do run the longest running kayak – freshwater tournament in new england it's been 16 years oh wow that's probably what i was seeing there, yeah. that might have been what yeah that might have been what you seen it was out of um mount road trading post in raymond new hampshire we hold it every year great so, uh, so the first part of the show we're going to get into uh ed's angler of the year run here uh, so mm -hmm. ed why don't you just uh give everybody a little background check on yourself where you're from and how you got into fishing? Uh, well, I'm from New Hampshire, uh, pretty much originally. I've been in New Hampshire for 51 years. Uh, I got my background fishing and trout fishing, believe it or not. Ed, that's my... longer than I've been alive. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I guess we're old. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I got a beat on 56. Yeah, we're a bunch of old guys here, so. But uh, I got my, my fishing uh, started with my father, uh, my father, Frank. We uh, used to do a lot of trout fishing in the uh, summertime. And uh, when trout fishing came to an end, I needed more. So I started bass fishing and I slowly learned and progressed and found other people to fish with and, and uh, different clubs and uh, different anglers and um, throughout the years have gotten to where I am today. Right. Now, how long have you been kayak fishing? Um, not as long as uh, I think it's been what, four years. I think it's been about four years. Dragged them in about four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's about how long I've been doing it. Yeah. My, my good friend, Sean here, uh, got me into kayak fishing and, uh, we've never looked back. I mean, uh, I used to do, uh, team tournaments, boat tournaments uh, throughout the state of New Hampshire and Maine. Um, glitter I, boats. Glitter boats, yeah. Um, I've got my feet pretty well set in both states. Uh, I've done very well. Uh, but it got to a point where I just didn't want to deal with the politics anymore. So here we are doing kayak fishing. <laughs> right. And it seems like the politics are starting to come into the kayak fishing. <laughs> yeah, but he stays out of it. That's a couple of the, Ed and a couple of the guys in the yeah. club. They just they do the club thing. They don't want to get into the the big league yeah. stuff of it. They're very happy. I'm very content just going every once a month and fishing with my friends and and uh, my club and uh, having a great time and uh, sharing my knowledge and uh, and things I know with the other club. So we can try to become a better club and uh, move forward. Exactly. Now, did you first start tournament fishing with the kayak, or were you doing tournaments before the kayak? I was doing tournaments well before, yeah. I fished uh, through the Maine Bass Trail out of Maine for four or five seasons, and then before that it was with uh, Rocky Ledge Bass Tackle yep. out of New Hampshire. Uh, I fished with uh, the gentleman there, Jim Migliozzi. Yep. Uh, we fished the uh, we fished his tournament circuit, um, and that was a long time ago. That was, that was over twenty years ago. So, right. It's uh, yeah. I've been I've been tournament fishing for probably you know, 20, 20 plus years. 
So do you use those rocky ledge spinning baits? Oh my God, those things are amazing. <laughs> yeah. I've heard there's a certain color on Winnipesaukee that is uh, real, real good up there. Uh, yeah, there is. It's, uh, there's actually a couple colors, but one of them everybody knows yeah. about. But the other ones, uh, it's a little bit of a secret, but uh, it's uh, it's a little smaller, and it's uh, definitely a demon uh, on that lake. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I met them at the uh, Boxborough Fishing Show. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do the FX custom rods at a lot of the fishing shows in the area, and so I see them a lot and talk to them guys. Good guys there. Um, what are you running for a kayak? I have a 13 foot native, native slayer, <laughs> uh, pedal drive. Nice. It, oh, the thing's amazing. I heard those things weigh about as much as a Volkswagen. Well, I'll tell you what I had my, my first kayak that I used tournament fishing or for, for the club was a kayak I bought through Bass Pro. Um, that, that weighed almost 90 pounds. This one, without the pedals in it, before I get it in the water, only weighs 83. Oh, so not that. So, uh, it's almost 10 pounds lighter. Um, plus, I mean, we all help each other when we get there anyway. Exactly. But, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing kayak. I mean, going from the strictly paddling to pedaling and the uh, advantages that you have in a pedal kayak um, are just absolutely amazing. Right. Uh, I have to agree with you there. Um, I went from a paddle kayak uh, with a trolling motor. I had a trolling motor added to it. Um, but even with the trolling motor, you still had to put your hands on it all the time. It was it was a pain. Once I switched to the pedals, I mean, I will never go back to any other way of fishing uh, out of a kayak. Yeah. The, the, the trolling motors, it'll get you there quicker, but the pedals will give you more. As far as like if the wind's blowing, you can pedal backwards right. or you can pedal forwards. You can stay, you know, you don't really need, everything's at your feet. You know, you, you can pretty much handle the kayak under any conditions. Exactly. Um, now, do, do you run electronics or are you strictly old school? I run a $99 Humminbird. <laughs> fish finder off the side my my deal with fish finders is i've been doing it for so long as long as i can see what's below me i'll determine whether the fish are there or not right um you know and, and that's pretty much a lot of old school langos will tell you the same thing but uh i i wish i had new electronics but uh you know working those new electronics can be a pain in the butt <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need to you need to spend just as much time learning the electronics as you need to learn how to throw certain baits it's pretty much yeah it it, it can yeah. be mind-boggling especially if you're not into the technology and all that crap yeah uh, the generation the generation gap will get you <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely um yeah. now do you go out uh, like a lot of these tournament guys, 10 rods, or are you a simplistic kind of guy? You know, when I go out by myself, I, I usually take a little boat and I'll take, you know, maybe five or six rods in the kayak. I limit myself to four rods, um, four rods that I can actually tie on what I feel that I'm going to need for the day. Um, if I need a fifth rod, that would be the, you know, it would be, in my opinion, a fifth rod would only come in the summertime. Um, when things are a little, you know, the fish are maybe a little deeper or, uh, I'm trying a different tactic or technique. Um, but four rods is about what I take. Um, you know, going from a big boat to a kayak was a huge thing because I had to shrink my tackle selection from a bag that was, you know, three, four feet long to a little tiny bag that was very small. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's a, a topic that we talk about a lot on the show, um, is how kayak anglers aren't, they don't have the room to bring tons and tons of, of stuff, which I feel could make us better anglers as fishing from a kayak, because you don't have as many options as everybody else. You know, you can't take 35 rods like Mike Iaconelli brings out on the water, um, and you, you can't bring bass pro shop with you out on the water uh, you have to really cut it down and you have to know what you're going to do before you even get on the water 
Exactly. I mean, it's the, it's the season, it's the time of day, it's the time of year, it's the weather. There's, you know, as long as you can break everything down and, and know what your conditions are and the time of year, which I would think is the most important, you can downsize your stuff to a reasonable amount of tackle to take with you. Right. right. Now, you fish just the Granite State Trail? That's all you fish right now? Yeah, I, yeah, I just fish the Granite State Kayak Anglers. Um, our, our club is, is uh, we've been around, I don't know, about four or five four years, years four years, I think. Um, and uh, we do, you know, because of work and a lot of other things, and, and like we talked about earlier, just being in right. tournaments right. for years and years, it's uh, it, this is great because it's it's a local group of guys. We're all we're all pretty much friends now, and we we all get along great. So now I assume you fish a lot of the same bodies of water every year. So do you still go pre fishing prior to the tournament, or do you just go strictly on history? Um, I strict I strictly go on history. I I fished enough of the water in the state of New Hampshire to know pretty much when and where and what and how and what to throw. Um, I pre fishing's a thing for me that um, a lot of people have two different, you know, everybody's got their own, their own take on pre fishing. In my opinion, it hurts um, because if I go and I pre fish the spot and I catch one fish, you know, that's one less fish I can catch, you know, depending on when the tournament is. Uh, if I do have to go to a spot, I'll go a month before, even though the weather conditions could be wrong, the time of year could be wrong. Um, I'm going to go to look and see what the structure is, what, you know, uh, just to make sure that the weeds are there or whatnot. And then I will um, vacate the premises until the tournament about a month later. Right. And then the, depending right. on the weather and the time of year, you know, like I said, that's when I'll throw what I want to throw and use the techniques I want to use on that particular body of water it makes sense it makes sense. definitely yeah. makes sense especially yeah. fishing the same bodies of water uh repeatedly you wouldn't want to yeah. beat up those those spots you have history in yeah. uh, what's your favorite technique for bass well there's a couple of them uh, i guess my my favorite uh technique is jig fishing um but um being a well versatile a uh, versatile angler, in my opinion, is uh, something that a lot of people need to um, practice. Um, I mean, there are a lot of techniques I'll throw, but probably jig fishing is my, my number one uh, choice. Yeah, that'd be mine, too. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, what, what would be a technique that you would want to be better at? Um, geez, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't do a lot of drop shotting. Um, drop shotting something that I, I don't, I, I don't see as, as well as I see a lot of other techniques. Um, and that's something I really don't do. Yeah. I can't yeah, catch a bass can't on can't a drop shot. Yeah, uh, drop shot is, is a definitely an interesting technique and it works. I've seen it on TV. Yep, I do too. <laughs> I, I, I've seen it from this guy I here. See, I see people do it all the time and they, they smash fish all day long. I throw it all as I can catch is pickerel. I, I cannot yeah. catch a bass on a drop shot. Well, it's funny you say drop shot. Our last tournament, he popped a 22, he popped and, a half. 22 and a half inch fish <laughs> in a drop shot. And I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, dude, where did you catch that? He goes, you ain't going to believe what I caught it on. And he goes, oh, my God. But, yeah, he popped a beautiful fish drop shot. And I mean, but. My last two tournaments were drop shot. Yeah. Two same, fish. same. Even the same. I was doing a drop shot with a Sally on it. Uh -huh. And it's the exact same Sally from the tournament before. I hadn't taken it off. Yep. And I caught a 19 and a half inch Smalley wow. on it the first wow. time. And then. The next tournament had happened still be on the rod and i just threw it out there and and grabbed that one 22 22 and a half, and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but that goes four hours four and a half hours each each one of those tournaments without catching a fish yeah and those happen to be my first fish i caught four and a half hours into the tournament yeah right All see right. i would think so, i would think ed you would be drop shotting i mean that clear water up there I, I would think that everybody in new hampshire would be drop shotting yeah 
clear. And we were, it's funny. We were just talking about clear water before we came on. Um, uh, uh, people up here in New England, the clear water is something that we've had to deal with for years and years and years, and we'll always have to deal with it. Right. Um, so, uh, one of my big things on clear water is you got to make a really long cast, and you got to have a compatible line to the situation you're fishing. Um, as far as you know, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, seventeen, twenty pound uh, fluorocarbon's a must up here. Um, a lot of people will tell you different, but uh, fluorocarbon cannot be seen, and it helps you get that extra bite or two that you need to put in the boat. I have to agree with you on that one. Um, uh, what's your f- favorite species of fish to target? Because I saw your your wall earlier, and I mean you had every species mounted on your wall. So uh, yeah, show us a little bit, Sean. There we go. Show everybody. There's a bunch of them. Yeah. I I will tell you, um, I love bass fishing, but if I could tell people the species to go for, and they're going to all laugh at me probably, northern pike without a doubt is probably some of the most incredible fishing that as an angler you would love to experience. Haven't done that on a kayak yet. <laughs> no, not in a kayak, but in a boat. And I will tell you, uh, Lake Champlain up in our great state of Vermont is just unbelievable for monster pike. Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, I've got a friend that lives on Champlain, uh, yeah. and he says the pike fishing there is great. I actually it's caught great. a 40-inch pike out of the kayak uh, during nice. the Mesolonsky tournament. Yeah, dude, that there was some big ones. Awesome. Out there. <laughs> yeah, dude. That is awesome. And I, I, was caught it, I caught it. I caught it. I caught it on a wacky rig using six pound fluoro. Are you kidding yeah, me? I caught that fish for like a half hour. Oh my god! Line, that's line awesome. drag screaming. It was insane. Oh, insane. That's great. But yeah, no bass. Bass is my is my uh, target species. But uh, you know, uh, pike. If I had to tell you one off the wall species that would be the hit the fight it's just amazing yeah they yeah. they do fight yeah, they really oh yeah fight. <laughs> they'll take you I, they'll take you for a ride i call them sleigh rides that's for yeah, sure I, have, I haven't got them to try kayak striper fishing yet <laughs> i haven't tried it either and i live in rhode island where some of the best yeah, striper you, nice in the world. Down there. <laughs> you got the best striper in the in the planet yeah yeah, yeah. and i don't even do it uh i've i've talked to a few people and i think this summer i'm definitely going to make a a, a a trip out there top top water yeah that's what i hear and move big it, old, yeah. move big it old real spook. fast yeah big old spook. big old spook will yeah. do it yeah um so now sean when exactly did uh granite state kayak anglers start um four years ago uh may of four years ago um i put a club together because well it had the the little boat club years before that and there was nothing around here for kayak fishing there was no no clubs no everything was all down south um i had been running that tournament out of mountain road trading post for years um and going on youtube and everything else everything was down south there was nothing up here for it right so i got a bunch of the guys together from the old club a couple new ones and i basically modeled it after kbf um and how they did everything and just figured if i can't find one to join i'm gonna have to make one exactly you know so just put it together hoping that it would be a model for people i was hoping to get like chris meggs you had on last week yep um, to be able to get a bunch of different clubs around the state not one big club, but a lot of little clubs, you know, 10, 15, 20 guys, um, and maybe have little competitions between the clubs, but to grow the sport and, and have it spread out. Yeah, that, that that's a good plan. I mean, even here in small Rhode Island, we have three clubs. Um, yeah. And, I mean, kayak anglers, we like to fish those smaller places so that we don't have to deal with all the big boats and stuff. Um, so you're not going to get, 50 guys on each pond so if you have three different clubs 20 guys each club i mean you're still getting 
everybody's got it, a place they can fish. It's rough up here in New Hampshire because in order to get a permit to be on any of the bodies of water, you ha you can't have you can only take up fifty percent of the parking. Oh wow. So <laughs> finding any body of water that you only take up fifty percent of the parking is tough unless you only get a club with ten guys in it. Yeah. You know, a lot of these small small parking lots, they only have eight, ten, you know, parking spots. Wow. You know, so you either have to have off site parking or go to the bigger lakes, and even some of the bigger lakes don't have a lot of access points. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Winnie was uh, the size of Winnie, and the the lack of boat ramps. I was like, yeah. <laughs> when I went up there to That's... fish that tournament, I'm like, everybody's launching from the same places. It, yeah. it's... Oh. Everybody wanted to get on Pogus Bay. I found a way onto Pogus Bay. Oh yeah. Uh, that was legal. You had to go up a <laughs> way up this back dirt road. And there was a culvert that went into a back cove. <laughs> and you could park along the side of the road. It was actually, in KBF rules, it was a legal launch. Right. Uh, got onto Pogus Bay and caught nothing but um, rock bass. Lots and lots. <laughs> Every time you put a hook in the water, you come up with a rock bass. It was like it threw the whole, whole thing. I ended up at uh, uh, Lee's Mills. Yeah, that's where I was. That's where I fished. But I went all the way as far as you could go from there in that back bay back there. And yeah. like Ed was saying earlier, you can pre fish and totally screw yourself. Well, guess what? I pre fished and I got a lot of bites. I only put two two fish in the boat, I think, pre fishing. Uh but I yep. got a lot of solid bites. A lot of times I'll I'll clip my hook off so I don't hook them. Um and I, I had a ton of bites, and I thought for sure, like, I'm catching them. I'm going to catch them all day, tournament day, off these bluffs with a shaky head. That, it, yeah. I mean, I got a million bites that, uh, during pre-fishing. I go back, yeah. it's like the fish disappeared. Yeah. You know? It, it yeah, was, that was a rough one because it's home state, and I only live an hour from there, and I get skunked. <laughs> I think I put two on the board. My brother put... Uh, Two on the board, but he ended up with daily big bass, so yeah. he 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 cashed a check. Yeah, yeah, we had Chris from our club uh, came in second. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Now, Ed, have you been with Granite State since day one, or did you come in later on down the road? I've been with them since day one um, and before, so I've known Sean for several years. Um, we've been friends for quite a while. Um, but yeah, I've been fishing with him for quite a, quite a long time. <laughs> I live on a lake, so I, I get a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would imagine if, uh, if I lived on a lake, I'd have a, a house full all the time Yeah, or, or a backyard full. Um, so describe like how the, the club is formed each year. Cause you guys have a, a set limit of members so how do you yeah we just we just went to 20 we had 15 i i was working when i started the club i was working somewhere between 65 and 75 hours a week and then trying to pull the club off on top of it so 15 guys is about all i could mentally handle <laughs> um and also as far as getting on the permits back then changed when you got about 15 members and trying to get on lakes and everything else it was just easier to keep it at 15. Um, I modeled it after KBF you know all the rules and everything else were basically early KBF rules. Um, it. How do you decide who the members who are going to be? Do you... Well most of it most of it was the guys that I fished with from the old club or a couple of the new guys, you know, guys that friends all got in. And then to grow the club, I had it up online on the, I did a Facebook page and different people uh, asked if they could join in. Um, unfortunately it grew like I, I put it out there and nobody was saying anything. Nobody was asking to join anything. And then all of a sudden it was like, 30 people all at once. 
<laughs> so I had a get together for the guys in the club and anybody. So the people who showed up for that kind of were the first choice okay. Of, okay. of who we're going to have for a member because they made the effort to be there. Right. Uh, right. This year, the same thing. It got down to the, you know, the last two, I ended up having to put four names in a hat and, and pull a name for the last, you know, the last name. Yeah. So, that's fair though. That's, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I've got um, three women in my club now. That's great. That's just great. They're great fishermen or fishing ladies. Yeah. I don't know how, I'm not sure what the politically correct woman angler. Is. Woman uh, angler. I think lady woman angler, angler is the lady anglers. political. Yeah, we have, we have three correct. lady anglers. Very good fishermen. Very good fishermen. Um, you know, I, we're, we don't care. You know, right. they, they fish right. just as. Yeah, there's no difference. Nope, not at all. Oh, you know, I think Christine's proven that. <laughs> yes, yes, she has. <laughs> um, now, is there a membership fee each year, or, or do you just? Uh... Yeah, what I was doing when I first started was it was a ten dollar per member, and oh, then nice. five dollars, five dollars for an alternate. This is for the season. Uh, five dollars for an alternate only if you fished. In other words, if you were on my alternate list but you didn't make it, then you know it was just if you happen to fish a tournament. Um, all the money goes to the end of the season, um, and with the fifteen guys, it was one hundred and fifty bucks. Right. So I just got right. a couple Bass Pros. I got a seventy-five, a fifty, and a twenty-five for the top three guys at the end of the year. So all the money went into that. That's good. And I've been doing, good. I've been doing that for three years and the club cost me a hundred bucks last yeah, year which is <laughs> which is not good um we made some altercations yeah we season. changed it around we moved it to it's 25 25 yeah. um that's still, to join us still but all the money all it is is any anything i need i need i don't run it off of tourney x because i've only got 15 to 20 guys and as much as i like tourney x um you take that five dollars from each and it's not going to the guys. Exactly. Um, so I run off of Creel cards. You write down its time, date, and um, your length. You write them all down. You go to your last, your top five, and at the end of the uh, tournament, whoever's in the running, you have to show me your pictures. It's the same um, ruler. You know, we all have hog troughs. Okay. Okay. Which, now is getting to be tricky, I guess. But, <laughs> uh, we all have hog troughs. That was that was set, and we just judge the pitches at the end of the last the last three guys. You know, we pay out four places. Um, we've been doing twenty five. Although we bumped, did we bump it up this year? We bumped it up to 30. 30, 30, 30, 35. 35 mm -hmm. per tournament. Yeah, and it's getting split up. Part of my mouth. Okay. Twelve, ten. Uh, eight and five. Eight and five. Twelve, ten, eight and five. So it's everything's always a total payout. Right, hundred so, percent. Right, the top four places, and then there's a there's the side pools that go on too. Um, we actually did a side pool <laughs> last year. It was a test run for pickerel. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ken Wood uh, does that in the mess uh, kayak guys in there. He does yeah, that. Yeah, side pool for pickerel. It, it helps a lot of it helps a lot of anglers that are still learning fishing that might come into a big pickerel right actually actually win something at the end of the day exactly yeah. and it last year was the first year we did it I wasn't sure how it was gonna go it went great it went awesome I mean you know we set the rules for measuring a pickerel we stuck to those rules and I mean I think every single person that won Lunker Pickerel only won it once. So it worked out good. I mean, you know, if you just get lucky and catch a decent sized pickerel, your chances of winning, you know, depending on the amount of people that are there are forty to sixty dollars. Right. How many times have you run into a tournament and all you caught was pickerel <laughs> all day long? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a one of our one of our uh, club members, um, we fished a pond that had uh, both large and small mouth in. So what I did is, is I did lunker largemouth, lunker smallmouth, and lunker pickerel. And uh, he ended up winning 
$95 with Lunker Smallmouth and Lunker Pickerel because he had both, and he didn't even finish in the money. You know, which and, and as far as the rest of the tournament went, yeah. So he didn't even finish in the top four places, and he won both lunk, two of the three lunkers, and he won ninety five bucks. Wow! You know, he was wow. extremely happy. I mean, yeah. and and it just shows it showed the rest of the club that you know you, you can still have a decent day of fishing, yeah. Catch two fish and one hundred bucks. Yeah. See, it's so, not with us. It's not about the money. It's not. It's, it's, not. it's no. It's just enough money to make it competitive yeah you know to get a little something out of it to add a little bit of competition yeah. to but it's it, the club was designed to just get a bunch of friends together mm -hmm. uh to fish and have a good time with a little bit of competition between yeah. us right you know, so somebody can organize you, you yeah. know yeah. somebody yeah. can stick their chest out at the end of the day you know yeah, what exactly. i mean it's, yeah, exactly. that's all it is right a little bit of competitive edge and that's what it is is and, and i think i think we we our prices and our membership dues and everything are so small that it allows even you know people that have a hard time coming up with some money it it it, it yeah. enables them to fish enable, yeah to, it to enables us to fish and get into the fishing and have fun and uh, and we don't do uh, a lot of the clubs have sponsors yep i don't chase sponsors um, you got to give, they're looking for something too. Exactly. You know, it puts pressure on the club. Um, it's not that it's a bad thing, not saying that at all, but the club, we try to keep as low key as possible. Yeah. This is our first real cool shirts yeah. that we got other than that, <laughs> you know, um, but it's just, it's more about the camaraderie on the water than it is the competition even. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody's yeah. there to help each other out learn more he's taught me a ton over the years uh made me a much better fisherman um and it, and everybody's always there to help yeah you guys are that small <laughs> grassroots i mean yeah. as bare that's bones what we want, as it that's what we're trying to stay yeah i've got five members going to the nc this year um not i got half at least half of my club are not kbf right you know, because they just want the once a month get together with friends, and they're very happy with that. You know, they don't want to get into the the more and more competition. Ed, do you the, see, do you see yourself uh, going to KBF? I keep trying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know these guys keep trying and trying and trying and, and and you know maybe someday. I just the traveling and with a stick. <laughs> yeah, the, the traveling with. Uh, you know, traveling to all these places and it's just, uh, something I'm not, not looking forward to right now, but I know down the road, I mean, these guys will keep egging me and digging at me <laughs> and uh, I, I'm pretty for one year. Yeah. Just one year. Get the hook in. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe even this year, it depends on, uh, I think situation. I've got them talked into the Northeast trail, Jason's Northeast, the, you know, the, the New uh, England Park trail. trail. Yeah. 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 Because you don't have to be KBF, right? For that. And there's some good stops, some real good trail stops on that series. I mean, yeah. Great Pond and Maine. Ed, yeah. you said you fished Maine before. That's oh yeah. I mean, come on, man! It doesn't get much yeah. better than that. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think I can drag him yeah. into a couple. Of I those. fished all over Southern Maine, and it, I'll tell you what: if anybody hasn't experienced Southern Maine, the bass fishing up there is phenomenal. Yeah. I, that, I actually grew up in Southern Maine. I grew up in Naples. Uh, yeah. Until I was so, about... so so you must know Keyser Lake. Uh, I'm I'm not sure. As a kid, I don't didn't really know the names of places, but I was okay. right near Long Lake. I mean, I was yep. like I used to ride my bike to Long Lake. Yep. I fish right there on the causeway under the bridge. Yep. Yeah. That's a beautiful lake. Yeah, very yeah. beautiful lake. Um, now how about the number of tournaments? How many tournaments do you guys do a year? I do six tournaments. It's um, May through October, and then I do the one for Patakaway uh, for the the um, the one Mount Road Trading Posts uh, tournament. I run that one now. So I run seven tournaments. Six of them are for the club. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, a once a month get together for everybody. The October tournament until this coming season has always been a half tournament we have a half tournament at my house and then um we have a big barbecue 
potluck barbecue and do the awards and everything else in October. Yeah, I saw some pictures of that. Uh, you guys look like you're having a great time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's always a great time to go there. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the wives, you know, the kids, everybody gets involved. Everybody, in it, so, yeah. You know, so it's it's a family get together. That's great. That's great. So, how does your <laughs> angler of the year system work? How do you score Basically, points? And... <clears throat> yeah, we no, we do the uh, the inches add up every every um, every tournament, and then we do six tournaments, and I only we only did three, the top three out of the six. Um, didn't really matter with him anyway because he had us all ass kicked. <laughs> all six. He had 530 inches, 130 plus inches for six tournaments. Wow, wow, yeah, he kicked our butts. Um, except for Dave. Well, when it came down to um, measuring up the three top, um, Big Fish Dave was a half an inch short. <laughs> <laughs> it came down to a half an inch a between half an inch. him and Dave. Yeah. He was also our um, our top angler last year, the year before. So he's taken it two years in a row. <laughs> so we had a couple guys that are trying. Yeah, they're working on it. They're working on it. That's got to be like a, what, 80-something inch average for 530 inches? Yeah, one tournament. tournament that was 79. Yeah. The rest of them were all 80s and 90s. Wow, man. That's insane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had a, it was funny before, it was probably th three years ago, I had a, we have a pond not far from where I hit, live here in Dover, um, it's a reservoir, and uh, the water was down a little bit, it, um, I came in with 101 and a quarter inches for five fish, <laughs> yeah, and, and we had a guy that, uh, a, a friend of our, Sean, who lives local too, and he was fishing there, and he came in, he goes, Ed, I got you this time, and I says, I don't know. I says, it's going to be close. He goes, what do you mean? And I go, how much do you got? He goes, well, I got 92 inches. And I go, oh, really? I said, I got, I got you by at least eight. Goes, wow. <laughs> that, was, that was the biggest bag I've ever weighed or measured in in a, in a kayak tournament. Yeah, and, uh, yeah that's kayak. that's like a month long. That's, that's like a yeah. month long total right there. I, I did yeah. that in less than eight hours. Yeah, it was... Uh, I told you he's a stick. It was a great day. <laughs> uh, how about plans for growing? Do you see Granite State kayak anglers growing into something larger? I grew it into up to twenty this year, from the fifteen. Um, I don't know. I think I want. I really want to keep it simple. Yeah, you guys seem like you do uh, want to keep it simple. You know, I just like I said, the game plan when I first started it was to have, like I said, a bunch of small clubs. Um, you know, the other club is 20 plus members, 25 plus members on uh, New Hampshire kayak fishing, uh, Chris's club. Um, he's got a great group of guys. Um, uh, I'd like to see more clubs like that around the state. Right. I grew up, I grew up in Massachusetts in around Burlington. And every other town down there, when I was a kid, had um, rod and gun clubs. Yep. And they all had little uh, fishing groups in each rod and gun club. Each town had its own group of guys, and they'd have little tournaments against each other. And it, it just seemed like a, a really great way to to run things. Yeah. I, I mean, I, the, big, I, I, the big is good. I mean, KBF has done so much for the you can't they they've done everything for this sport right now this was your first year as a partner correct correct now how did that go like did how did you be, well. decide that you were going to become a partner i mean after four years you've you've ran the club and then now this was your first year um kbf came up um and started doing more up here we got into the regionals and, you know, breaking it up into that. So it, it seemed like a good idea. Um, I didn't have to work 70 hours anymore. I got down to a 50 hour week. So I got a chance to do a little bit more with KBF and doing more of their things and um, got a couple of the other guys involved in it too. So just trying to, you know, I'm trying to grow KBF and the sport. Um, 
working with Ken and Jason on the different uh, trails. Uh, last year, I helped them out with the, the Winnie, the big Winnie tur tournament up there. Um, but I think it's like I said, it's KBF is great, and like I said, I can't say how much they've done for this sport. Um, but there's the other side. There's still a lot of guys out there that love to kayak fish that don't want to get into that big of an organization. Right. Like, like, right. Just, like Ed. You know, I just want to go out and have fun with my yeah. friends. Yeah. So some of us have got to, some of us have still got to stay simple. Right. <laughs> now you guys, you guys have been around for a while. I don't take that the wrong way, but you guys have been around the fishing industry for, for quite a yeah. while. Um, and seeing kayak fishing grow from what it was years ago, just guys hopping in a kayak and going fishing. Nobody thought anything yep. of it. How has the growth of this sport affected you as a club and as an angler? Um, we've run into a few issues between <laughs> pedals, motors, and paddles. Th yeah, this is where I, I want to go with this. This is, yeah. this is exactly where I want to go with this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been, my first kayak I built when I was 14 years old uh, to fish out of. So I've been fishing out of a kayak for 40 something years. Mm. I started 40 something years ago. Long time. Um, designed it for holding rods and reels and stuff like that. It was a light enough boat that I could throw in my mother's car and she could take me someplace. Right. Um, the. From there, it's it's gotten crazy. The boats now are just that. They're boats. They're, boats. they're what I, I call them PFVs, personal fishing vessels. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, we ran into, my club does not do motors. It's human powered only. We do allow motors only for handicaps. Okay. In other words, uh, in the beginning of the club, we had uh, one of the club members had a lung issue, had a hard time breathing. And uh, so we allowed him a motor. Um, we have a guy in the club now that um, we we allow him to have a motor. Uh, he's had Lyme disease and has a really hard time with his hands. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the joints and stuff like that. So he has a really hard time even holding a fishing rod. So to paddle, he doesn't have the pedals. So, you know, to to get someplace it, it just makes it much more difficult for him so the club gets together and we go yeah that's you know that's fine you know but when you get a perfectly healthy person that wants to you know scoot around with a motor it's like no that you can paddle you can paddle <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so. i i use a motor because i was lazy <laughs> <laughs> now we get now I pedal though. I pedal now. I, I I I think the pedal's better than the motor. I mean, you don't have the weight I, of the battery and yeah, the weight I have of the to motor. Agree with you there. Yeah, yeah. It's hands free for the most yeah, part. Yeah. I mean, I run the Predator PDL just like you, Sean. Yeah. Uh, I, I bought boat. that because it paddles so well. Yeah. It. I. In my opinion, it paddles better than the uh, the uh, regular thirteen. It does. I found the same thing, but I think it's because. Um, it displaces my fat butt a lot better than the smaller 13. <laughs> uh, I don't Maybe, maybe I think, that's I think what it is. It keeps me a little bit more afloat so it goes on top yeah. instead of plowing through the water. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had my the regular 13 at Toledo Bend when we were down there for yep. uh, that challenge championship or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, those waves down the southern end of that that, that lake – uh it was pretty serious where i oh, was yeah. uh but the bread of the 13 handled it and i mean yeah i've handled um did you do great uh lake george i did lake george uh, last year uh, yes yeah the the windy day up there in the broads but i was in the area that i was in there was no wind oh, okay <clears throat> i was way up north oh, this, it actually would be the pre-fishing the day before Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. I was cro yeah, we we're crossing the broads. I actually took a wave over my fish binder. Wow. <laughs> yeah, at uh at Winnipesaukee, I was in that back bay back there, and there's yeah. the island before you get to that back bay, and there was a a big wake boat, just 
sitting there like they were mourned or get whatever anchored down and the kids were yeah. jumping off the bluff into the water well i'm mm -hmm. fishing along and then all of a sudden i hear him start it up and i'm like there's no way this asshole is going to do this right here right now. i mean we're like 20 yards away from each other oh yeah and this guy pulls a hole shot with this thing that's got like probably twin 550s on the back of it and yes i'm telling i took that wake to the chest Ooh. hit me right in the chest i thought for sure like as soon as he did it i started putting my rods where they needed to be i thought yeah. for sure i was going over and i didn't go over i mean i know for sure that that boat can handle just about anything oh yeah yeah i've done three four footers and it fine my um my handle's rough water yeah um anybody who's fished with me for any length of time my uh my fishing buddy mike uh prospector um he's i put him through oh 25 30 mile now winds <laughs> four to five foot seas uh pretty much anything you can imagine he's he's had to deal with just fishing with me it's like it, the wind will always be blowing in my face so do you guys think that the growth is benefiting the sport or do you think it's diminishing the the originality of kayak fishing um, it's definitely diminishing the originality of it, uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, it, it all depends on your perspective. Right. Well, I think, I think you guys are doing a great job of kind of keeping that originality. I mean, you got low entry fees, low membership costs. It's not a big competition kind of thing. It's more of friends getting together fishing. So as long as groups like you guys stick around, um, we're gonna try no yeah we'll do what we can and and you know the thing is is if more groups would do what we're doing or something comparable i think uh the local industry would benefit um the local anglers would benefit the local new clubs would benefit um and it would benefit all of us at, yeah. in the end right. so i mean the big like kbf all that they have done the innovation that has come about because of them is huge yeah i mean i mean look at some of these some of these fishermen that have created businesses off of it i mean yes. catchboard and um then you got jim strunk's the little models. flip it oh, thing tourney it. tag yeah. and i mean yeah. all these these oh, yeah. guys were just regular regular anglers that have created companies torquito yeah torquito yeah, yeah. i mean you know i think uh, they were like a they were, they were like a german Torquedo was like some German company that made some type of electronic powered motor thing, and then they like right. jumped into the kayak scene. Yeah. If I if you I know, it's, it's done a correctly. lot, it, it's done a lot to create this sport. This sport isn't the original sport. It's 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 morphed into something different. different. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's not a bad thing. Um. It's just different. Exactly. It it exactly. separated itself from that local from the grassroots original. level. Exactly. Um, you said it's not a bad thing. It's just different. That's all. Now that Bass has entered the scene and Hobie's got their big series now, um, I, I kind of want to say that KBF may return more to that grassroot kind of kind of scene instead of letting the local partners do their thing instead of trying to run a big national yeah i don't know i honestly i mean i remember kbf i wanted to go down to cooper santee you know 10 years ago when chad was first doing kbf and your national championship was a hundred and 10 guys from around the country that just showed up right. you know that he called it in and said you know we're gonna have a you know the big fishing tournament here and because nobody was doing it exactly you exactly. know you know to what it is now right i mean they started it all they, they, yes they absolutely did and which kind of irks me a little bit about people when they talk trash because i mean KBF was the original. They started it. So, of course, they're going to be the first ones to make mistakes. It's easy for you to, to point fingers at them when you learned from their mistakes. You know, of course, you're not, you're not doing it. 
you're not going to make the same mistakes they did because if you did you're an idiot i mean to me before you before you open your mouth and start talking try stepping in their shoes exactly they they had to start this i've run tournaments i've done this stuff it's not fun. No, it's not. I run the I run the Rhode Island club here, one of the Rhode Island clubs here, and I mean, I spend a lot of my time, just like I'm sure you yeah. guys do, a lot of yeah. your, your with a lot of headaches. Yeah, your personal time. You're spending figuring out tournament dates, applying for permits, and making sure that your Tell tournament me. dates don't conflict with other clubs' tournament dates. I mean, it's on and on and on. <laughs> And, and then you get things like the flex gate that's oh, yeah, going on, yeah, it, you know, and, and all the rest of the different bull that you end up having to deal with when it gets that big, it gets it ugly. Does. And, uh, you, you know, Chad almost threw in the towel. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And I would have been, I wouldn't have known what to do. I mean, at that point, that was like three years ago, I think when he was really thinking of, he was, yeah, he was having a really yeah. hard time. And I that was like when I first started getting serious about it. And back then I had a real drinking problem. And kayak fishing is what stopped me from drinking all the time. I mean, I'll still yeah. have a few beers and stuff like that. But back then, I mean, I was drinking almost a 30 rack a night. Yeah. Uh, so without kayak fishing, who knows what would have happened if he would have shut down the doors because... Help change your life. Yeah, around. because people run in their mouth about mistakes. I mean, mistakes are going to happen. I, I don't care what kind of business you're running, um, especially something this large. I mean, there's thousands of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they... Yeah, we keep it tight. We, we kind of laugh when we hear things about cheating. Yeah. You know, they, you know, oh, this person, you know, they, they did this, they did that, and it's like we joke because in our club... You better hope the cops find you because we're gonna cut your boat in half. <laughs> no. We're gonna we're gonna start with your rods and cut your boat in half by the no. time you're yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, it's it's insane. You get a little bit of money involved and people do stupid shit. Well that's the and that's the reason why we kept ours, you know, I, I wanted to keep it small and, and yeah. keep it just enough so that it keeps that unhealthy uh Cheaters are going to cheat yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Exactly. It, so, keeps that, it keeps that healthy instead of at a bow, uh, at a disadvantage for, you know, the honest angler to the yeah the guy angler. the guy who's looking to make a couple bucks. Yeah. We exactly. had that problem with our old club, the uh, the little little boat club. We had guys that were um, at that point in time we were judging each other's fish. Everything was by weight. It wasn't by length. You know, back in those days, it was all done by scales. Yeah. So yeah. we all measured our scales and all that, but calibrated. Yeah, yeah, calibrated it. And then you had guys that were always um, the same two guys who were winning, and the same two guys were judging each other's fish. Uh -huh. uh, you know, and it, it just it just it, it leaves a sour hole in your stomach. That's yeah. for sure. So now we just um, we're we're down to Dave and Ed and Matt and Paul. We're just subtracting five inches from their total <laughs> score at the end of the day. What What's some advice that you would give to the next generation? You know, when those, those these younger guys are going to be in your shoes running clubs and uh, keeping kayak fishing going, what's some advice you would give to them? Keep it fun. Don't let it, don't let it lose the fun. Yeah. When it starts losing the fun, don't do it. Yeah. Small, controllable atmosphere, and once you once you grow past that, you open yourself up for a lot of problems. You know, um, I, I think by allowing you know people to be able to come out and enjoy without having to dump two, three, four hundred dollars out of their pocket just to fish something, and when they can dump fifty bucks out or thirty bucks out or even twenty bucks out and have a great day learn something and enjoy themselves is much better than worrying about somebody cutting the tail of a fish off and adding a half an inch or an inch to their <laughs> board because they cheated and right. uh, but keeping it small and, and keeping it, uh, you know, local, um, you know, that'll open up a lot of avenues for a lot of people. Great advice. Great, Great advice. advice. All right. Last question. Each one of you is going to get to answer. Uh, Ed, will go with you first. Top okay. five anglers of all time. It could be anybody. It doesn't have to be pros. 
Top five anglers of all time. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, Rick Clun, probably be number one. Um, I, I got to throw Bill Dance in there. <laughs> I know that sounds cheesy, but I'll tell you what, the guy fishes stocked ponds and I'm really jealous. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, let's go. Rick Clun, Bill Dance, uh, Jimmy Houston, uh, Hank Parker. And uh, uh, I want to say Roland Martin, but uh, I'll say Roland Martin. What the hell? I mean, he's he's a he's a great angler. Yeah, he is. Um, they, you can't take that away from him. But I, I figure those in my in our era in our age, those are the old guys, and uh, they've done a lot for the sport exactly. themselves. <laughs> so with, without right without those five people along with uh, ray scott and everybody else i mean you're you're not we're not having this conversation we're not doing what we like to do and enjoy doing yeah. on a on a on a weekly daily basis and uh, exactly so. I, i'd have to throw kvd and uh, denny brower in there too <laughs> into that group yeah. uh, kvd uh, i uh, mean you gotta have him in yeah, there he's just, he's just kvd you just <laughs> yeah <laughs> He is who he's he is. He's the Tom Brady of <laughs> bass yeah. fishing. I mean, he is. The guy's done it all. Yeah. So. All right, Ed, I'll let you thank uh, anybody you want to thank, and, and then we'll get you guys out of here, and Sean will let you thank who you need to thank. You go first. <laughs> well, most of everything that I've done, I have to thank, and unfortunately, it's – uh, posthumous would be my friend George Beaumont, who owned Mountain Road Trading Post. We lost him the day after Christmas. Um, he helped me through 20 years of working. I worked for him for 20 years at the shop doing canoes and kayaks. Um, he's the one that I did the I do the Pawtuckaway tournament with uh, for the past 16 years. Um, he's probably been one of my big influences um, in this sport to help me get through it all. And of course, my other half here, uh, Betsy, who puts up with me uh, through all this. <laughs> Your habit? My habit, <laughs> my bad. My, ba my bass habit. Yeah. Um, doing all my bass porn. Uh, <laughs> um, and just my friends, Ed and the rest of the guys in the club. You know, they back me. I back them. It's just, you know, you got, can't do it without. It was like a tight family. I can see it. Yep. We, we also, I got Jason and Jason and Ken out there have been, been great help too. They're good guys. Yeah, they're, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to give them too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Ed? Well, I, I guess I have to thank my mother and my father uh, and my grandparents for taking me out fishing and getting me involved in uh, something that I have grown to absolutely love doing and enjoy doing. Um, and then it would go down to friends like Sean and my friend Paul and my friend Dave and, and everybody that I fish with in my club. Um, you know, we've all become a very well-knit family. And uh, if it wasn't for, you know, for all those people, um, keeping things the way they are keeping it real keeping it real so to speak yeah um things would be yeah keeping it real, be, real, be a lot different <laughs> you know i i do i do have to throw a couple out to my uh my friend jim migliozzi who uh, owns rocky ledge bass yeah. tackle um he got me involved in in tournament bass fishing over 20 years ago and he is one of the main reasons that i enjoy doing what i do right now um so other than that i i really don't know of anybody else i can thank i can probably thank everybody there. right right you right, always got to right. forget somebody so, somebody's yeah. somebody's gonna message you after this and say you didn't thank me <laughs> yeah somebody's gonna get left out probably my mom who's watching this who i used to put my kayak on her car and she'd take me <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I have to thank you both for coming on. I mean, it was an absolute pleasure talking oh, to oh. both of you. Thank you. Uh, I had a great time Thanks tonight. For us. You guys are, the like I said, the grassroots, the the homegrown 
you know, like you guys are the the reason that us younger guys are doing it. You know, <laughs> we saw you guys out there when we were little kids, um, and we were like, hey, we want to do what those guys are doing. Uh, so thank you for what you guys have done for the sport, um, and thanks for keeping it simple, man. It, it humbles a lot of the rest of us, you know. Like this is where it started, and maybe we should uh, keep it simple too. Uh, and maybe we could get a lot more people involved if we weren't all uh, thinking about the the check at the end. Yeah, not everybody's a pro bass angler. Yeah, that's for exactly, sure. exactly. You know, and even if you are, if you if you humble yourself and you you remember where you came from. Yeah, you it's like that. it's like the NC. I have no illusions of winning that. Hey, but I just want to go down and be part exactly. of it. Exactly. Uh, I've that's I've qualified I've qualified uh, three years in a row and I've never gone. Uh, so this year yeah. I was like, you know what? I just want to experience it. Uh, yeah, there you go. that's what I'm going for. I have a goal to get into the top 100, and if I can yeah. get into the top Come 100, here. I'm happy. Uh, yeah. If I Listen, I gar I guarantee if you go down there and you enjoy yourself and you have a good time fishing, you'll do what you want to do. Yeah. If you stay positive, I I guarantee you'll you'll be very successful yeah. down there. Have fun and just fish. Yeah. That's what I've learned uh, halfway through last season because last season I, I struggled bad. Um, and I went out with a, an angler that uh, is in my club who was doing really well. Um, mm -hmm. And we just talked. And after that one day, it just changed my whole perspective. And the end of my season went fantastic. I just went fishing. I, I just went yeah. fishing. I didn't. You had, you had you had to center yourself. Exactly. I was I was I was stressing myself out. There. You know, I'm driving yep. to the ramp in the morning and I'm already stressed, heads pounding like, yep. and it, it ruined it. It, it was that's no that's no way to enjoy what you enjoy exactly. doing. Exactly. Yep. So now I'm just going fishing. If it if go. I cash a check, it makes it great. If I don't, hey, I went fishing. There you go. It's it's the like. The whole reason the club was put together was just to go fishing with friends. Yeah. Yep. You know, get the guys together and ladies now. Yep. Uh, together and and just go have fun and fish. Yeah. We we do have we have three women in our club. Yeah. And, and I am I am I'm excited about having women in our club. It's uh, some something that needed to happen, and uh, I'm glad we have the three ladies we have in our club. They're very good anglers. Yeah. Well, we got one new. Yeah, we get the two, and then we got we a, got new, a one. new one. Yeah. See. See how she holds up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. She seems like seems like a good person, so we'll see how it goes. Guys, thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, I, I, like I said, I had a pleasure. Uh, we'll let you guys get on with the the rest of your night and enjoy your weekend. All right, and I'll you see too. you. I'll see I'll you down the. I will absolutely see you down there. It was a pleasure talking to you. You as well. Take care. All right. Have, Have a, a good, good night. night. All right, guys. That was Ed and Sean from granite state kayak anglers uh thanks for tuning in guys uh like i said last night during that episode i've kind of been slacking on getting the episodes up on youtube but this weekend i promise you uh by sunday night all of the past episodes that i haven't uploaded will be uploaded and can be viewed over and over and over again make sure you guys subscribe on youtube uh we got to get those numbers up there we need to get get our own uh custom url address and all that happy horse crap that uh needs to happen to promote this this show we got going on uh, next week we got some big news coming on 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 a couple of episodes so stay tuned for next week's schedule uh, you guys aren't going to want to miss it, especially if you're from Rhode Island. You are definitely not going to want to miss it. Uh, we got some big news coming for you. Um, so we'll see you guys uh, on the next go around. Tight lines, good times. See you next time.